One way to combat sloppy notes fields is to use a script. A script can make sure that your data is entered consistently and in chronological order. Now it's not foolproof, people can still click in here and start typing, but we'll put a little button up here and hopefully through training they'll click on that button rather than just type. So we're going to go into script workspace, create a new script called notes timestamp, and the first thing we're going to do is go to field, and we're going to go to that target field, the notes field. Now what happens is when you put in or say go to field, it's going to put the cursor at the end of the field, of the end of the, we want it at the beginning. So we're going to use next as set selection. This allows you to position where you want that information to be, and we're going to put zero, zero, because it can actually highlight text, and you can actually specify complex calculations here. But we just want it at the very beginning of the field, so zero and zero, meaning zero position and zero highlight. Now you also need to consider what are we going to be doing this you know, to? Are there multiple notes fields in the database? If so, you want to switch to go to object instead of go to field. This is more dynamic adaptive. And so we can say notes field here. And then erase this out of there come over here, go to layout mode, and simply name this notes field. I might have a notes tab, um, I might have a notes something else, that's why I put the word field at the end, just to make sure. Now the thing is, you probably won't have notes fields, uh, multiple notes fields on the same layout, they'll be usually associated with different tables, so notes field, a general name like that is going to be just fine. But otherwise, if you don't, then you can use a script parameter to pass the name up from the button so it knows which field to go to. So we're not going to do that. We're not going to get that sophisticated, but it's pretty simple to do. You just attach that name of that field because you might have another notes field under another tab for another reason or who knows what. You just Each button passes a different name and they can still run the same script. So we'll come in here to script workspace, go into the notes field. Same thing, it's going to go, when you go to the object, it's going to do the same thing as the go to field, it's just a little more adaptive. We'll set the selection. And here comes the part that does all the magic. We'll insert calculated result. And it's very important to uncheck select entire contents. Because if you don't, then it's going to select everything in that field and then overwrite it with the calculated result. We don't want to target, just like we don't want to target with set selection here because we've already specified the target up here. We want it to be adaptive. So each of these steps, we don't have to specify that information. All we need is a calculated result. And you have a lot of, uh, you can do a lot of things with this, but I'm going to go ahead and put a dash in quotes, and then concatenate it with get current timestamp, and then concatenate it with a colon, a space, or actually I'm going to say yeah, space, and then two returns, and if you're on uh, Macintosh, it's option seven, or if you're on Windows, just come over here and click this one. And that's it, so we're going to get that information input in there, and so what's going to happen is it's going to put the stamp in there, and it's going to put a couple returns in there, and it's going to separate these two. So, in other words, the it's, it's probably easier for me just to show you, so we'll come back and look at this again. Now there's one last step we need to do because our cursor is not going to be in the right position for typing immediately. So we're going to set selection again. No target field again. We're going to say get active selection start. That's a function that says where's my cursor right now basically. We're going to subtract two right because remember that we auto entered and so we're at the end of the two returns we want to go back a little bit and then we're going to end position with zero again we don't want to highlight so let's save that and see how it works I'm going to make this notes field a little bit smaller so we can fit that button in there I'll grab one of these nice buttons up here I'll duplicate it change the 
information here. There we go. Make sure I spell it correctly. Get it right in there. It fits in nicely. I think we don't need to do any more with that. I think I've got it lined up. There we go. Good. Change the icon. So let's see what we can do here that will be uh, make sense for people when they look at it. And let's see. I think the little calendar is good. Oops, and I forgot to assign the script. That's always an important step. And I accidentally clicked the wrong button there. Don't want to go ahead and uh, actually got what, what I'm seeing here is I got a popover instead of a button. That's why I'm have, getting confused here. So we're going to have to start over. It's no big deal. If you make a mistake, just start over again. I do it all the time. So duplicate, move it in there. See how it looks again. Looks good. Double click. Get the right icon. I know exactly where it is now. There we go. Perform. So we're going to add in the script here. And we'll say notes timestamp. Change that to timestamp notes. Something like that and we're ready to go. I think we've got it anchored in the right place here. That's good. I just you get it you get in a, a rhythm here when you start developing of knowing where things are and what they do and remembering which things to update when you do it. So, let's see what happens here. If I hit this button, look what happens. It it put in this information first, right? Let's see if I can get it unhighlighted here. Come on. There we go. So, put this information in first and then the cursor was down here then it subtracted and made it come back up here. Let's try that again and see that. Maybe we can do it in slow motion here. Turn on the script debugger. Put it over there, make it a little bit smaller. That's as small the script debugger will get, so we'll have to work with it there. So I'll hit it. Step into the script. Either one of these will do for stepping through these steps because there's no more perform scripts. See, it goes to the object. You see your cursor's there at the end. Set the selection. Now it's at the beginning. Insert the calculate result. Our cursor's down here. And then we set the selection back there, and we're set to go. And now this is completely adaptive to any file or any layout, as long as we go ahead and specify that name as notes field. And if you don't want to do that, or if you have multiple fields, you can also pass this along as an optional script parameter. So we just go ahead and put in there notes field and then come back into our script and instead of specifying it hard coded I put get script parameter. And that may work better for you as far as being more adaptive, more dynamic. And there you go, there's your notes timestamp. It doesn't solve everything, but it should help to go ahead and make things a little bit neater uh, so that when people go ahead and click this button each time it's going to go to the top and you can put your notes in there just like that see how easy it is to do